Welcome to Texa Tutorials. Uh, many of you asked me about creating a prototype tutorial, so here I am. JavaScript is prototype-based language and inheritance in JavaScript is based on prototype. Prototype is a huge topic and I cannot just teach you prototype without teaching you how the constructor works, uh, how inheritance works in JavaScript. So this tutorial is going to be a little bit longer, uh, but uh, do not skip because every step is very important in this tutorial. By default, every function has a property called prototype. This property by default is empty and you can add properties and methods to it. And when you create objects from this function, uh, for example, uh, if I create x1 from x, it would inherit these properties and methods that's defined in x's prototype. So this is, uh, in nutshell, what prototype is. Now, uh, JavaScript is a bit confusing for developer, um, experienced developer in class-based languages like you know Java or C Sharp. Um, it is very dynamic and it does not provide a class implementation. Now, you know, in a recent uh, ECMA 6, the latest version of JavaScript has a class keyword, but it's not the same uh, as, you know, the one in Java or C Sharp. I still consider it a prototype based language. And just like in Java, you would create class and then create objects from it. Um, in JavaScript, you would create constructor directly. And using these constructors, you can create objects from it. So let's look at an example of constructor. Now here, in this example, um, I have a function x. Uh, now every function expression is essentially a constructor in JavaScript. Now this is an empty one, there is nothing inside, but I can actually add properties to it. Uh, directly, uh, I can say this dot i equal to uh, zero. I can set a default property, uh, default value for this property i, or I can have uh, prop property j, which would be j here uh, that I pass. Okay, um, just like any other um, constructor, um, this is a constructor. Um, I can also I can also write methods to it. Here I have a method uh, get j which returns the value of uh, the property j. So this is an example of constructor. Now I can actually create instances of x from it using a keyword new. So I can create objects from it. Uh, as many as I can. I, I, all I have to do uh, is variable name. Let's say I'm going to create x1 from x. So I'm going to have to say new x. Since it's a constructor, um, I need to pass this j, which I can pass as 1. Okay. Um, I can say x2 equal to new x2. Okay. So I have two objects and the first object's value of j, property j is 1 and the second one value of property j is 2. Um, I can look at it by consulting it out. I can say x1 dot get j. Uh, when I do that, let's see what happens. Um, when I run this, I get 1. By the way, I'm using JS Fiddle here. Um, I can do the same thing uh, for x2. When I run it, I get 1 and 2. Since x1 and x2 are instances of x, they are actually distinct objects, which means they are two separate objects. Uh, they're created from x, so it inherits all the property, all the methods. Uh, property is methods, so it inherits all the properties and methods from X. So X is technically parent cla class for, in each object, you would find the method get J. So if I create thousand objects from X, 
each object would have its own method get j, which is kind of redundant. So the solution is prototype. And to understand, I can I'm going to take this method and make it a prototype method by uh, writing x star prototype dot get j and I'm writing it outside this function as you can see it's not inside this function it's it's attached to the prototype property which I told you earlier that every uh, every function has a has a property called prototype so I'm attaching this method to that uh, that to that property now it's automatically available to x1 and x2 even though it's not part of this so let's run this if I run this <clears throat> I'm again getting one and two which behaves exactly like uh, it used to behave before the only difference is now x1 and x2 does not have its own method get j included inside. Inst instead, um, whenever I call x1.getj, it looks it up into the prototype chain. It looks up into the parents, uh, into its parent, and uh, uh, see if it can find um, uh, that method in the prototype. And it finds it and it just uses it from the parent. So it's using x's method. It's not inside x1. So that's uh, what prototype and essentially now this way the objects are much smaller you don't have to have all the methods inside the object you can use it from the parents prototype so this is what constructor is in nutshell in JavaScript every object in JavaScript is created from this master object it's spelled object with capital O so let's say if I create a constructor variable x equal to function uh, it's an empty uh, constructor and if I want to look at where it was created I can simply say console dot dir x uh, dir basic console dot dir basically allows you to look at the object in much more detail so if I run this I would see this uh, function x and if I expand this I can see something called proto here so the X is cre basically what it means X is created from uh, this uh, proto another object called function and if you expand this it has a bunch of methods and properties and at the end it has another underscore underscore proto underscore underscore uh, which is object which means the function is created from this master object or mother object whatever you call it and it also has a bunch of properties and methods uh, so basically X is ultimately created from this object and this is what they call prototype chain x is created from function and function is created from object the master object and every one of them have every one of them have a prototype property and a product prototype has a bunch of methods and property so x can have access to all of them through prototype chain so whenever you call a, a method if it's not available inside X, it would look it up, see if it's in a function. If it cannot find in a function, it would look at the prototype of object, the master object. If it finds it, then it's you, you, it would use it. If it cannot find it, then it would be undefined. Let's say if you create another object from, if you create an object X1 from X. Now X1 has access to the methods and property defined in the entire prototype chain you can access to access prototype function prototype and object prototype if you look at here in the in the prototype chain uh, object has a method called to string which nothing but serializes the object and prints it out so I can do this I can say console dot log x dot to string 
if I clean this up and run this, it will print the body of the function, which is this. So even though we have not defined this two string, uh, a method for X, we can still use it from the master object where you have a bunch of default methods. There's three, still lots of things to learn uh, in terms of prototype and how to use it. So uh, in next tutorial, I'll teach you how to create subclasses or subconstructor, uh, overriding uh, in prototype chain. Uh, for example, how to, if you write a method uh, in any uh, uh, given point in prototype chain, how to override it and how the whole thing works uh, and adding a prototype to a master object. So that we can use it in any object that we create from it. Um, so I'm, I'm pro I'll provide a link at the end of the tutorial. Hope you have learned something from this tutorial. If you did, then please uh, follow me on Facebook and Twitter and subscribe the channel, like the video, and provide some constructive comment or question if you have.